and welcome. The first appearance of Peter Quill, also known as Star-Lord, was within the pages of the Black and White magazine, Marvel Preview No. 4, in 1976. Originally, the character was going to star in his own black and white magazine, but it was decided to try him out in an anthology title first in order to, presumably, gauge his popularity before committing to a solo title. According to the writer, Steve Englehart, he had an overall direction for the character in mind. He planned a journey that would begin on the innermost planet, Mercury, and expand to the outermost planet, Pluto. Allegedly, 12 story parts were roughly plotted, with each story part taking on the characteristic that astrology applied to a specific planetary body. From there, the character would travel beyond the solar system and into new adventures. However, not long after his initial appearance, Englehart left Marvel Comics, and those plans never materialized. This first appearance is radically different from any other appearance of the character. He is, basically, Space Jesus. It's a less than subtle parallel that the writer lays out in a lengthy introduction preceding the actual story. Furthermore, Star-Lord was a revenge-driven anti-hero, somewhat along the lines of a cosmic punisher, one could say. It's a very odd combination of New Age beliefs and vigilante morals. As for the story itself, Peter Quill was born during a planetary alignment. The same alignment allegedly occurred in biblical times, when a little baby messiah was born on planet Earth. Unlike his direct parallel, Quill doesn't study carpentry. He becomes an astronaut instead. This is so he can get into space, find the aliens that murdered his mother, and get some revenge. Quill's father is unknown and completely absent. Once Quill has become an astronaut, a moment of divine intervention happens. To make a long story brief, Quill is chosen to become the Star-Lord by the cosmic being known as Master of the Sun. Quill is given a uniform and a weapon that harnesses the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. These elements also symbolize the physical, the breath of life, the mind, and energy, respectively. No point remembering that detail, it will never be mentioned again. Star-Lord then gets revenge on the aliens that killed his mother, and that is where the story concludes. The second appearance of Star-Lord, in Marvel Preview No. 11, was the first collaboration between the writer, Chris Claremont, the artist, John Byrne, and the inker, Terry Austin. This was the creative team that would go on to great success with the X-Men a few years later. The second story would establish a few significant changes to the character, most of which endure to this present day in one form or another. For one, Star-Lord was joined by a sentient starship known as, um, Ship. This pairing would develop into a very weird relationship over the next few appearances. Most importantly though, Star-Lord's origin gets a makeover. The unknown absent father aspect of Quill's birth is completely erased from continuity. This absence is explained as Quill's mother, Meredith, being mind-wiped to forget her relationship with Quill's father, Jason, who was an alien that crash-landed on Earth. Meredith discovers Jason's crashed ship, nurses him back to health, and, of course, they fall in love and do adult things that lead to babies being born. Jason, who is royalty and basically in the middle of a civil war, needs to return home once he's healed. So he erases Meredith's memory to protect her, and then he takes off for home. By the end of that second appearance, Star-Lord is established as an alien-human hybrid, with the space empire as his birthright. According to Claremont, the anti-hero concept didn't quite work for the character, and the origin was, essentially, rewritten so the reader could identify with the character. In modern terms, this was a soft reboot. In 1982, this reboot would be reprinted in color, with an all-new framing sequence written by Chris Claremont and illustrated by Michael Golden. Basically, in this framing sequence, Star-Lord's father, Jason, decides to abdicate his throne and to join his son on his adventures in space. However, this possible storyline is never explored. As a notable aside, the first printing of this magazine included cover text that the author, Robert Heinlein, objected to. Quite rightfully, he argued that his name was being used to sell this magazine, despite the fact that he had no involvement with either the character or Marvel Comics. This printing was immediately pulled from shelves and replaced with copies that excluded the cover text, thus preventing a lawsuit that Marvel would have likely lost. The next two appearances, also written by Claremont, in Marvel Preview No. 14 and 15, flesh out, literally, the concept of ship. Ship is able to create a body for herself, although she keeps this ability a secret from Star-Lord. Her origin is also explained. Apparently, she was a sentient star that was destroyed by a race of galactic warlords. Her essence was collected by the being that gave Star-Lord his abilities, Master of the Sun. 
This collected essence then took on the form of a starship in order to help Peter Quill during his adventures. Of course, Ship is secretly in love with Star-Lord, and despite the fact that they have a weak, telepathic bond, Star-Lord is conveniently unaware that Ship has the feels for him. Yeah, this is the type of basic, melodramatic tension that Claremont is known for establishing. As a trivial aside, the original print version of Marvel Preview No. 14 has more than a few instances of nudity. However, modern digital copies have all the naughty bits covered up. Star-Lord would make two more magazine appearances, the final one being in full color, and then the character would transition into regular comic books. All of these subsequent appearances were written by Doug Mensch. Wisely, he would avoid or ignore the love relationship Claremont had established between Ship and Star-Lord. The first of these comic book appearances, in Marvel Spotlight No. 6, once again retells the character's origin. Most notably, Master of the Sun is given an origin, so to speak. Master is, actually, Ragnar, a renegade scientist from the race of aliens that killed Star-Lord's mother. Creating Star-Lord was Ragnar's way of interfering with the war his race had been waging in the galaxy. In fact, Star-Lord was intended to be the first of an entire army of Star-Lords. But for reasons that are not explained, Ragnar stopped at one Star-Lord. Star-Lord would make two more appearances in Marvel Spotlight No. 7 and in the 61st and final issue of Marvel Premiere. Following this appearance, the original version of Star-Lord would fall into comic book limbo and would not be seen again. In fact, the Star-Lord concept wouldn't be used for another 15 years. The next iteration of Star-Lord occurred in 1996 with a three-issue miniseries written by science fiction author Timothy Zahn. This Star-Lord is Sinjin Quarrel, a mildly psychic human from some indistinct society in some indistinct future time. Sinjin discovers Star-Lord's ship and is convinced by ship to become Star-Lord in order to help her find the missing Star-Lord, Peter Quill. Clearly, this was intended to be a starting point for a new Star-Lord series. Unfortunately, it is terrible as both a story and a concept. Sinjin is, quite literally, a fraudulent hero. All of his abilities are derived from ship, who goes to comically elaborate methods to give Sinjin the appearance of superpowers. Appropriately, this Star-Lord is never heard from again. Once again, the Star-Lord concept would fall into limbo and remain there for another seven years. In 2004, within the pages of the first Thanos solo series, Peter Quill shows up for the first time since 1981. This Peter Quill has a face of weird cybernetics and an attitude that's best described as world-weary. Along with Thanos and many other unsavory galactic criminals, Peter Quill is in a maximum security prison called the Kiln. Quill surrendered to the authorities and was imprisoned after killing 350,000 people during an attempt to stop one of Galactus's original heralds, the Fallen One. This battle also destroyed his sentient companion, Ship. He subsequently gave up the Star-Lord title, the Uniform, and the Element Gun. This same world-weary Peter Quill would appear in Annihilation, the cosmic event from 2006. However, the backstory concerning his reasons for giving up the Star-Lord title aren't explained until the follow-up event, Annihilation Conquest. During this event, Star-Lord would get a four-issue miniseries that fully explained his current status and why he gave up being Star-Lord. Furthermore, all of the cybernetic implants are removed, and he is once again mostly human with an alien heritage. He is also completely powerless. By the end of Annihilation Conquest, Peter Quill assumes the Star-Lord title once again and, shortly thereafter, reforms the Guardians of the Galaxy. This team and Star-Lord's participation would continue on for two years, eventually settling into a core configuration that resembles the current version of the team. It should be noted that this version of the Guardians, especially the team dynamic, is the basic template for the movie version of the team. Speaking of which, in anticipation of the forthcoming movie, Guardians of the Galaxy was given a new ongoing title in 2013. Once again, Peter Quill's origin is given another reboot. This reboot essentially refines some of the elements already in place for the character. These elements would be further expanded upon and refined in the Star-Lord limited series from 2016. For the most part, the origin previously established by Chris Claremont remains intact. Peter Quill's father is the alien Jason of Spartax. His mother is the earthling Meredith. Jason crashes on Earth, becomes involved with Meredith, and they have the child, Peter. Jason leaves Earth to rejoin the war his race was engaged in, and some years later, the aliens Jason was warring with, the Badoon, show up on Earth to kill Meredith and Peter. Peter survives this attack, but Meredith does not. 
Years later, as a teenager, Peter joins NASA, where he steals a reverse-engineered Kree warship, and he jumps into space. This warship gets damaged, and soon thereafter, Peter is taken in by the space pirates, the Ravagers, who are led by Yondu. In other words, Star-Lord's origin, so to speak, is rather close to the origin seen in the Guardians movies. There are differences, but they are basically the same, as is the character of Peter Quill. While he may be motivated by seeking revenge for his mother's death, he's fun-loving, adventurous, more resourceful than the average person, and he makes with the quips when possible. You know, it's generic action movie hero type of stuff. As for the title of Star-Lord, in the Guardian series this appears to be an honorific, much like Prince or King. It's a title given to him due to his heritage. Whereas in the Star-Lord Limited series, it's a name Peter Quill gives himself. It's a minor contradiction, but it's one my inner continuity geek noticed. Perhaps this is explained away at some point, I'm unsure. In the end, Star-Lord is an example of a character being rescued from obscurity. Star-Lord, Peter Quill that is, was quite literally unused in any capacity for 22 years. But he is now an integral part of the Cosmic Marvel playground in both comic books and movies. That's it for today. Like, share, subscribe, and comment, and I will talk at you later. Until next time.